So this is master class four, shuffling and life cheat. Disclaimer, do not condone cheating. Not trying to encourage cheating, definitely not trying to teach how to cheat, but there is something when I was you know trying to come up with um, when I was shuffling and mulligan and I was doing test hands and I'm trying to theorize on why I mulligan a certain way and then I started realizing something and that's where the life cheat thing came from so just something I had noticed and I'm going to share so that way people know and hopefully this will help discourage the idea of using this method and you know reduce the, the overall existence of this uh, life cheat and <clears throat> you know make the game more uh, more honorable, fair, whatever you want to call it. Or at least just so people know that this is a thing. So first off, let's go with the purpose of this video is shuffling. Which might seem you know, unimportant because a lot of people are like, oh, I already know how to shuffle. Well, the thing is there's certain types of shuffles that um, is cheating. The, the main one is the stack shuffle where you're just doing that, right? Just taking cards from the bottom of your deck and throwing it on top. Bottom of the deck, throw it on top. A lot of people tend to do that one. I call that stack shuffling. Because by doing this, you're literally trying to stack. Let's see. Let me find. All right. So that card. So let's say you picked up, you know, let's say you picked up your deck and you quickly looked and you can see, oh, I know what that is. Even without seeing it completely, I have a pretty good idea. I know what that is. It's a hollow. Maybe it's the only hollow in my deck. Therefore, I already know that that's my ultimate or finish or whatever. Okay, so then you can literally do that. When you draw, bang. Draw your opening hand, bang, you automatically have your finisher. Your ultimate, if you only have one in your deck. Right? So, there's a cheat. <laughs> you know, just because of this, uh, I'm messing up, but because of this method of shuffling, of just throwing cards on the bottom and throwing them on top of the deck and then calling that a shuffle. Obviously, you can, um, your opponent can cut, obviously reduce the chances of you deliberately taking something and putting it on top of your deck. That's the importance of cutting um, after somebody shuffles cut. So this is how you could prevent the stack shuffle cheating, but, you know, if no one's stopping you from, you know, deliberately throwing cards on top of your deck, like, let's grab a hollow. I right, just put this one back. So say I do that, and I make it look like that, right? And then the idea is, I'm using my combination of my hands. Well, let me grab some more. All right. Oops, messing up. All right. So let me grab a little bit more. All right. So then I'm like, you know, grab, no, I'll grab half, half the deck, and it's like throw there, throw there, and then with the thumb, you know, you can. You know, go bang, 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 you're using your thumb to, to stack. So let me grab this. So see, I can, I'm messing up, but you get the idea. Is that you're trying to throw some on top and using your thumb to guide. You're applying pressure to the size of the cards. I am not holding these cards right. Until, you know, you literally only have one card left, which is your ultimate in your hand. Bang, top of your deck. All right, no one's paying attention. Then you draw your six cards. And now your ultimate's in your hand. Right. Now this ain't the cheat, the life cheat I was talking about, but this is something obviously that could happen to the whole stack shuffling method. Right? See? Bang, got my ultimate. Don't do that. Don't cheat. Alright, so that's why this method of shuffling again. Uh, wait, did that one. There's the ultimate. You know, see? I knew where it was at. Um, wrong. Don't do that. Obviously, the proper way, you know, to reduce cheating, obviously, right, is to do something like that, cut your deck in half, put, uh, instead of putting it sideways and trying to make them fall into place, which can still work at times, but a better method, a little more natural method, is to have it on at angles, and then drop them at an angle, and then slide them together. Give me a sec, through, and then slide them together. This is the method that I use, and then slide them together. So that's 
you know, a way to, sh to shuffle. Another way is to cut and slide like this. So you can see, see that. Hope you can see that. And then slide some more. Let's see. Try and get you some right angles. I don't know if you can see them clearly. What you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to put a card in different spots. See how they're separated because they're in different stacks. And then you're just doing it again. Different stacks. You're trying to. So this is a method that I do. Um, because like in Magic, for example, they don't want you to put, let's say this is a land, land, uh, a card you could play, land, card, play, land, card, land, card, or, um, you know, two lands, a card you could play, two lands, a card you could play. They don't want you to do that. Um, that's called mana weaving, is what they call it. And, you know, they're against that. Um, which is weird, they should allow that. Um, do the mana weaving, and then after that, shuffle, you know, oops, regular shuffle. I do not know why I'm having trouble shuffling. Um, you know, shuffle and then have your opponent cut all the usual stuff. And this will make it um, random, but at the same time, you don't want it to be 100% random where you draw a whole bunch of lands and then you get all screwed and then the whole game just doesn't, just doesn't, doesn't pan out the way it should. It should be random because you shouldn't have the same cards to play with all the time, but you still should have a playable hand. I hate the whole, that they're against the whole weaving thing. Considering the fact that we still shuffle, we cut, and we do things to reduce, um, to, you know, to add some randomness. But we still should weave before um, shuffling. But whatever. They're against it. Oops. Sorry. They're against it. So... A way you can try to is like if you have your stack of lands and you have your you know your other you know the cards you're gonna play then what you could do is you know do something like this you know this method right because all you do is, is essentially just cutting a whole bunch of cards into it and this is somewhat of a form of man, uh, mana weaving but without the actual method of mana weaving and you know you can obviously do this without looking, so you can literally take the deck apart and just do that. And it'll, and it'll just look like, yeah, you know, you can go like this. There's also this method doing that. But then there's this one, like I said, you can just go like that, and then go like this. That's what I like to do. So there's different methods, but these are among the more preferred methods all right now to the actual cheat it's funny how I had another cheat but here's the actual cheat now this is the life cheat I was talking about so let me just show you my hand so these are your eight life right here you see there's a hollow and all these are not hollow so let's try to shuffle and try to make it as random as possible Alright, so this should be pretty random. Alright. Now the idea is to find hit. I'm trying to hit, hit, right? So, grab my life. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I'm right, it was the one that it felt the hardest, right? Oh, I did it wrong. Alright. I, it was this one that felt the hardest. Alright, so this is hit. So you see hit. Let's try it again. Kind of did mess up that a little bit, but I did find the hit. I was able to. So you see, I, I was able to find the hit. Let's try again. Yeah. Yeah, that should be the hit. Right, so there's the hit. So you see, I'm finding the hit. But I should be able to find it more so through uh, actually putting the card down. Try one more time. See if I can figure out the hit. There's the hit. This one felt like the hit. And it is the hit. Alright. So you see I'm finding the hit. And I shouldn't be. This is supposed to be random. I'm not supposed to know that this card is. 
as I was saying, I shouldn't be able to find the hits in the snack. Now you might be thinking, oh my god, are you a psychic? Are you a wizard? Nah, it's the fact that um, you can tell when you bend a foil, when you bend a foil, like, you know, when you're bending a foil to put it down, you can feel more resistance on a foil than a non foil. Non foil bends a lot easier than a foil. So, because of that, well, that's a foil. That's not a foil. Another way you can tell is that when you do that, that's louder than this one. This one's more like a poof. This is more of a slap. Slap. Poof. Hollow. Not hollow. Ta da! It's not magic. It's not wizardry. It's not a trick. It's just science. So, that's how I'm able to find it. Which is why you saw me like when I had life. I was like bending some of the cards. I was looking to confirm that, you know, that I was hit or something. But before, you know, you actually, let me shuffle this a little bit. You know, the idea is that you're trying to memorize it when you're doing this. I think this was, yeah, this is a hit. So you try to memorize it. You try to memorize when you, when you felt something that had a little more resistance when you put it down. You know, another way, if you, you know, if you, if you listen well, you know, you're, I'm using my sense of touch mainly to find it, but you can also use your hearing. That sounded a lot harder, so there's hit. All of those sounded pretty flimsy when they smacked lapped on the table, but this one, you know, sounded a lot harder. Flimsy, hard, flimsy. Maybe I just got good hearing, a good sense of touch, but, you know, again, not something that, you know, I should be able to do, but I, I can do, and that's the thing. Um, I don't use this method when I play, so I, I don't cheat. I do my best not to, but as you can see, there are slight methods. Um, something that I noticed from when I was playing, that I do notice that when I play and, and I, you know, put down cards and stuff like that, that I can sense it, I can I can feel that it's a hollow. And I don't play a lot of hollow, so that's how I can obviously tell when something is a hollow versus something's not. Now if your whole deck is a hollow, it's all hollowed out, this is irrelevant. This whole hollow uh, thing is irrelevant. Um, but since I play a lot of non-hollows, and sometimes I have a hollow just because it's the only version, like I would like a non-hollow version of this, but this is the only, uh, it comes out it's a SR, a super rare, so it automatically comes hollow, but everything else here, as you can see, non-hollow, so there's a high possibility of me finding this. And in my deck, I only have four of these and four of another card that are hollow, so the fact that I can actually feel the hollow through the through the sleeves, even if they're face down, I can feel if something is hollow or not, you know, because it's more resistance. That gives me an advantage that otherwise I shouldn't have. But again, do not condone cheating. Do not condone anyone to you know, test out and try out this method. Just pointing out that it is something that can happen. It's a slight flaw, I guess, with the idea of foils. Because if you have foils and non-foils in your deck, you know they're obviously different. And like I said, through touch, through feel, you can literally feel the difference. In the cards, you literally can tell if the cards are hollow or not. And then there's other details, like I said, the whole you know, people have a tendency where they put cards down, they snap through the little end slap thing, and that can tell you if something's hollow or not. And that's the end of the movie. Don't cheat.